Dear co-conveners, excellencies, dear friends of our planet, I'm pleased to welcome you to the Climate Ambition Summit on the fifth anniversary of the Paris Agreement. Five years after Paris, we are still not going in the right direction. Paris promised to limit temperature rise to as close as 1.5 degrees as possible. But the commitments made in Paris were far from enough to get there, and even those commitments are not being met. Carbon dioxide levels are at record highs. Today, we are 1.2 degrees hotter than before the Industrial Revolution. If we don't change course, we may be headed for a catastrophic temperature rise of more than three degrees this century. Can anybody still deny that we are facing a dramatic emergency? That is why today I call on all leaders worldwide to declare a state of climate emergency in their countries until carbon neutrality is reached. Some 38 countries have already done so, recognizing the urgency and the stakes. I urge all others to follow. Dear friends, we are not doomed to fail. The recovery from COVID-19 presents an opportunity to set our economies and societies on a green path in line with the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. But that is not yet happening. So far, the members of the G20 are spending 50% more in their stimulus and rescue packages on sectors linked to fossil fuel production and consumption than on low carbon energy. And this is unacceptable. The trillions of dollars needed for COVID recovery is money that we are borrowing from future generations. And this is a moral test. We cannot use these resources to lock in policies that burden future generations with a mountain of debt on a broken planet. And so the central objective of the United Nations for 2021 is to build a truly global coalition for carbon neutrality by the middle of the century. But that promise is not enough. To make it a reality, we need meaningful cuts now to reduce global emissions by 45% by 2030 compared with 2010 levels. And this must be fully reflected in the revised and strengthened nationally determined contributions that the Paris signatories are obliged to submit well before COP26 next year in Glasgow. I commend those leaders that will come forward today with new targets for 2025 and 2030. The United Kingdom has pledged to cut emissions by 68% by 2030 compared to 1990. The European Union has agreed to cut their emissions by at least 55% by 2030 compared to 1990. These decisions deserve to be emulated. Every country, city, financial institution, and company needs to adopt plans to reach net zero emissions by 2050 and start executing them now, including by providing clear short-term targets. Key emitting sectors, such as shipping, aviation, and industry, must also present and implement new transformational roadmaps in line with this goal. Technology is on our side. Sound economic analysis is our ally. Renewable energy is getting less expensive with every passing day. Climate action can be the catalyst for millions of new jobs, better health, and resilient infrastructure. But let us remember that this transition must be just and also recognize that women's leadership is good for climate action. Chers amis, of our planet, this is a moment of truth. This is also a moment of hope. More and more countries have committed to net zero emissions. The business community is getting on board the sustainability train. We see cities striving to become greener and more livable. We see young people taking on responsibility and demanding it of others. Mindsets are shifting. Climate action is the barometer of leadership in today's world. It is what people and planet need at this time. We have the blueprint, the sustainable development goals, and the Paris Agreement on climate change. But we all need to pass a credibility test. Let's make the promise of a net zero world a reality now. On the path to COP26, I urge everyone to show ambition, stop the assault on our planet, and do what we need to guarantee the future of our children and grandchildren. Thank you. With all of you on this, uh, on this call, on this conference, let's, let's do it together. Let's make it our collective commitment, as Antonio has just said, to get to net zero by 2050. And we in the UK, as he says, we'll, we're going to do our bit. We're reducing our emissions by 68% at least on 1990 levels over the next decade. And I'm, I'm really awed and, and humbled by the efforts of other countries around the world uh, to set their own targets. And I just want to repeat that, that key message. We're doing this. We're doing this. Not because we're hair shirt wearing, tree hugging, mung bean munching uh, eco freaks. Though I've got nothing against any of those uh, categories and mung beans are probably del delicious. Uh, we're doing it because we know that scientific advances will allow us 
collectively as humanity to save our planet and create millions of high-skilled jobs uh, as we recover from COVID. This summit marks the fifth anniversary of the Paris Agreement, the most ambitious step in our fight against climate change. Today, as we are looking to set our sights even higher, we must also not lose sight of the past. We must not only revise our ambitions, but also review our achievements against targets already set. Only then can our voices be credible for future generations. Excellencies, I must humbly share with you that India is not only on track to achieve its Paris Agreement targets, but to exceed them beyond, beyond expectations. We have reduced our emission intensity by 21% over 2005 levels. Our solar capacity has grown from 2.63 gigawatts in 2014 to 36 gigawatts in 2020. Our renewable energy capacity is the fourth largest in the world. It will reach 175 gigawatts before 2022. And we have an even more ambitious target now, 450 gigawatts of renewable energy capacity by 2030. We have also succeeded in expanding our forest cover and safeguarding our biodiversity. And on the world stage, India has pioneered two major initiatives, the International Solar Alliance and the Coalition for Disaster Resilient Infrastructure. Excellencies, in 2047, India will celebrate 100 years as a modern independent nation. To all my fellow residents of this planet, I make a solemn place today. Centennial India will not only meet its own targets, but will also exceed your expectations. Thank you. Thank you very much.